you found the skeleton. How would you tell people that was You first, first, first. How would you tell Well, interesting question. I don't know. 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 Hey there YouTube, the Dapper Dinosaur here. I am coming at you today with a video I didn't actually expect to make. But I was on Facebook early this morning, and a friend of mine had a picture posted, which is on screen now. And um, while I did address it with her, I doubt that she'll care, uh, I figured I wanted to talk about it here. Because while I don't normally do medical pseudoscience, I feel like this is one of those important things, because this relates to a current health crisis that is affecting a lot of people around the world, and especially in the country I live in, the United States. So it says, for those of you who might just be listening and not watching, so is hydroxychloroquine, which it spells wrong, but not so unimportant, only dangerous when prescribed for COVID-19 patients, but not lupus or arthritis? So let's talk a little bit about hydroxychloroquine. Hydroxychloroquine is primarily an immunosuppressant. That is, it broadly depresses the action of your immune system. Now, why might this be a good thing for lupus or arthritis? Well, it's not a good thing for all forms of arthritis, but some kinds of arthritis are in fact an autoimmune disorder where your body is essentially attacking parts of your joints after mistakenly flagging them as foreign invaders. Lupus, similarly, is an autoimmune disorder in which your immune system attacks your own organs, again having falsely flagged them as foreign invaders. Why might an immunosuppressant help with this? Well, I think it's pretty obvious. If your immune system is just doing less overall, it's also doing less of attacking your own body. Now, all medical treatments, every single one, is dangerous, some more so than others. There isn't a single drug on the market that cannot be abused in a dangerous way. The way the medical profession works is by balancing these risks versus the likely reward. Is the risk of taking hydroxychloroquine higher or lower than the reward you will get? In the case of many lupus patients and some arthritis patients, the reward is almost certainly higher than the fairly small risk. But why might an immunosuppressant help or not in the course of the disease? Well, there are in fact cases where immunosuppressants can help with a disease. In fact, hydroxychloroquine can help with malaria, basically by allowing your body to take it slow and not have such a severe immunological response to the malarial parasite that you die. Because one of the things you need to remember is that most of the symptoms that your body expresses when it's ill is actually a response of your immune system trying to help fight off the virus. So for instance, viruses don't want you to have a fever. Your body gives you a fever in order to make it harder for the virus to reproduce. However, if your body goes overboard and starts giving you, you know, a really high fever, like 106 Fahrenheit or something, that in itself can kill you. And in that case, an immunosuppressant might help. The question for COVID-19 is, is the likely increase in how long it would take for you to get over the virus overall more or less helpful than a potential lessening of the symptoms? And it turns out that even though there were some very early, small sample size studies that seemed to indicate that maybe that reduction in symptoms was helpful for long-term survival, that just has not borne out. And so the dangers of giving someone already infected with a virus, an immunosuppressant, vastly outweigh the essentially no benefits that the drug can give you. So that is why it is considered dangerous to give COVID-19 patients hydroxychloroquine in a way it's not considered when all you're doing is treating someone's lupus. It's almost like doctors aren't just morons who make up whatever they want because they hate Orange Man. Now, there's a second part to this image, which is uh, the same as gathering for protesting isn't dangerous, but assembling for weddings, funerals, and church is. Okay, so here's the thing. First, I'm a pretty darn big proponent of religious freedom. However, the minute that gets cut off is when your religious practice threatens harm to people who are either too young to make the decision or who are not part of your religion. So for instance, let's say you're a member of a church that does snake handling, where they take venomous snakes and they hold them up based on a verse of the Bible that, quite frankly, isn't really in the Bible, but that's okay. If the adult members of your church 
who choose to be there want to handle those snakes, that's great. If they try to get their children to do it, nope. That should be grounds for having your children taken away. Further, if you want to release these venomous snakes into the streets so that they can go run around and potentially bite people as some kind of religious devotion, which, okay, I'm not saying that any of these snake handling churches are doing that, don't get me wrong, that's a hypothetical. If they wanted to do that, that would also not be okay. I'm okay with infringing on your religious freedom to protect, say, your own children or the general public from your religious practices. Currently, unfortunately, most traditional church services are in fact a threat to general health. Because while the primary threat is to people in the congregation, there is nothing preventing them from spreading diseases outside of that congregation after they leave to go back home and then go about the rest of their lives, going grocery shopping, going to work, going to school, all of these things. Therefore, yes, it is in fact reasonable to curtail certain religious practices during a pandemic. As for the protesting, it is in fact dangerous. If you want to stop the spread of the coronavirus, you probably shouldn't be protesting. Um, unfortunately, there are also people who are facing imminent threat from both private criminals as well as public criminals in the form of highly corrupt and uh, very well-protected police forces, especially in the United States and other places too. At a certain point, it's going to be, be allowed to protest or it will turn into basically an open insurrection. And again, it is a balancing the risk versus the reward. I would, quite frankly, rather have some protests, even though some of them I think got out of hand, rather than just having large segments of the population going out and hunting down cops in the streets, which is, in the long run, the other option. People who are not allowed to express their anger and frustration at a political system in a way that is at least somewhat sanctioned will eventually turn to violence, and I think that would be worse for everyone involved. So unfortunately, while I would prefer that protests be somehow deferred until after the current health crisis, it's simply not a practical reality. On the other hand, people usually don't riot when they're told they can't go to church for a few months, and instead, they'll have to listen to church on the radio or watch it on TV. And I will point out, most religious groups have methods for administering their various services to people who are stuck at home normally, such as invalids or people in the hospital. They are more than welcome to use these methods to help bring whatever services they need to their flock. So for instance, there is a whole system of various people who can distribute, say, communion that the Catholic Church uses to get to people who are in hospitals, who are in isolation, who are stuck in bed, it's also why many churches have broadcasts of church services. I'm sorry that that is now the way that a larger portion of the population has to go to church. I wouldn't choose it, but I also didn't choose this virus. So please, if you see anything questioning why hydroxychloroquine is dangerous for people who have COVID-19 but is regularly prescribed for other conditions, send them my way, send them this video, or send them some sources. You can find a lot of information about what hydroxychloroquine is for, the studies regarding its efficacy for increasing long-term survival in COVID-19 patients are widely available. I will be linking some in the description. Check them out. And uh, also, yeah, the political realities are such that it is a, a good idea to stop church services from meeting, at least as they used to. But, uh, not really possible to do the same for protests. That's just how it is. Anyway, like I said, this was not a video I planned on making. It's honestly way more political than I usually get, and I usually don't do medical pseudoscience because it usually gets me really, really upset, but today I felt like I was in a good enough place that I could make this video. This is not going to be a replacement for any of my regular series or anything. I don't plan on making a whole lot of other medical pseudoscience videos. This is only my second one ever. But if something catches my eye and I feel like it really bothers me, I might go ahead and make another pseudoscience one. Either way, this isn't my normal content, but if you liked it, let me know. Uh, and please, if you haven't already, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're always notified when there's more Dapper Dino. Thanks for watching. But before you go, I'd like to give a special shout out to all my channel members and my patrons on Patreon, especially the $20 and above patrons and members. Ben Tovind, Ian Chen, Chris Love, 
Henry Hutanen, and Bob Knob. Your support allows me to keep making these videos, and without it, I would have to stop. If you're not already a channel member or a patron, there are links in the description for how to join either on YouTube or on Patreon if you like. But if a monthly donation isn't right for you but you'd still like to help out, there are a number of ways you can do so. First, every like, share, and comment on any of my videos really helps me out with the algorithm. And second, if you'd like a more concrete and monetary way to help out, there is a merch store linked in the description as well as an Amazon wishlist. I'm the Dapper Dinosaur. You're a f dog, Dapper. You're a dog. You're a f low life little f fancy little pants little f dog. F you and your Navy career, but you're a dickhead. You're a f sucking little f loving dickhead. F head. F dick. F poof the mother. F you dapper, you fucking dog. You're a dog. You don't have a clue, do you? Well, I tell you what, mate. There's evidence that those at that peer review never even looked at the paper, never even read it. They probably read the first few lines and saw stuff about creation and went, oh, we don't want that sort of paper here. When I like, you know what, you know what, quit dog piece of shit. not long dapper, you're going to look like the biggest quit that ever lived. So you go ahead with your little, I'm just warning you dapper, I'm just giving you a warning mate, you go ahead with your little show, your little anti fancy little fairy show, you go right ahead and do that, but dapper, one day, you know, you, you know, you might sit.